Hey guys, Bitter Steel here, back with another video, and this will be our last, I think, Hoi 4 Dev Diary for No Step Back. But this is one of the good ones. Today they revealed the achievements coming in the next DLC, so I suggest we quickly walk through them, and I'll give you a few of my thoughts on just how stupid or brilliant some of these are. Are they gonna be hard? Are they gonna be fun? Are they going to be interesting? So, let's go with our first one, Italy. At least they run on time, as fascist Italy have max level railways in all your core states. This is gonna be one of those ridiculously easy ones, like building max infrastructure somewhere. So this is just for the meme. It's 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 nothing special. It's cool. I mean, somebody thought of this. It's nice to have. It's not gonna be difficult. It's just another check mark to get when you want to get 100% achievements. Next up. Not much fun in Stalingrad, as Germany capitulate the Soviet Union without taking Stalingrad. Now, this isn't difficult per se, not if you use three collaboration governments, uh, but Stalingrad is a lot of victory points, it means you are going to have to push towards the Urals, and Stalingrad is probably going to be a local supply hub, which means you will have to somewhat handicap yourself in terms of your supply to make this happen. You'll probably need to build railways around Stalingrad to bypass it, but it's a nice little challenge. Why not? It's a different way of playing the game, I guess. But on the other hand, it is it is just purposefully making your life more difficult than it needs to be. But hey, that's what achievements are for. No more partitions as Poland be independent and ensure that both Germany and the USSR are either in your faction or don't exist. Now, this is one I am looking forward to. You will be the Chad Poland. There will be no further appeasement. Nobody's taking another slice of Polish clay. This does look very interesting. Now, I don't know if both Germany and the USSR at the same time have to not exist or be in your faction, as in um, you could side with Germany and destroy the USSR, or the other way around, that's relatively easy, or do they both have to have the same status at the same time? So I, I don't know if they, that this means that you need to destroy both Germany or be in a faction with both Germany and the USSR, or it could be one or the other. If it's just one or the other, that's easy. You just pick a side and play World War II as a German or Russian uh, follower, I guess. If it has to be both with the same status, you will be going alone or at least in the Allies and you will be fighting a two-front war. Interesting. Either way, it's interesting. Habsburgs, Habsburgs everywhere, as Poland install a Habsburg monarch and be in a faction with another Habsburg monarch. I like this one. I really, really like this one, even if it's just for the meme. I mean, Habsburg Poland looks so cool. And I think this is not gonna be as much of a headache as the Ottoman achievement, because uh, I saw in the focus tree there is unless I'm mistaken, there was a focus that would allow you to force Hungary to take the Habsburg air. Um, I am looking forward to this one as well. It looks really cool and any excuse to play the Habsburg is, is a great excuse in my book. So looking forward to this one. The Pope, how many divisions does he have? As the USSR take Rome, eh, it's not that difficult. It's just gonna be a bit of a nuisance trying to first take out Italy or at least naval land in Italy before you take out Germany as uh, the Soviets. Uh, it's gonna be a bit of a bit of a bitch pushing through the Balkans first or trying to get a naval invasion off. All in all, not that difficult. Like I said, it's it's much like the Stalingrad one. It's making things needlessly complicated, but it's a nice challenge. It's a nice challenge. This is going to be lit as Lithuania hold the capitals of all your neighbors. That's actually a little more difficult than it sounds because I think Lithuania borders Germany, they border Poland, and they border... It's not Estonia, it's Latvia, isn't it? Yes, Latvia. So, Latvia is easy. Poland Poland's probably okay if you know what you're doing, but Germany's gonna be a bitch if you're gonna have to take Berlin. So another big challenge because Lithuania, probably not that strong early game. So this is gonna be a long play. Next up, it has my name on it, as any Baltic state conquer the entire shoreline of the Baltic Sea. Again, like the previous one, this is much more difficult than it sounds because you will be going up against Germany, your Baltic cousins, which isn't that much of a problem. Poland, eh, doable. But then you're also going against the USSR, another bitch. We've got Finland in there. Yeah, not that much of an issue, but again, 
more land to conquer. And last but not least, Denmark and I believe Sweden. So you are going up against every major faction in the game if you're going to do this one. So that's going to be either a very, very long campaign or it's going to require some extreme exploitation of game mechanics to get this one without it being a massive headache. I look forward to making a guide on this already. This achievement is cheesy as Latvia form Ostland and occupy Vasterbotten. Vasterbotten is located in the Lapland states. Um, is this collaborationist Latvia that has to invade Finland, I guess? I don't see the correlation with cheesy though. It's just gonna give you a different strategic aim in your campaign, I guess, unless instead of focusing on the Russians or purely focusing on the Russians, you're just gonna have yourself a bit of a northern campaign, draw Finland into the fray and move from there. I don't think it's gonna be that difficult, but we'll see. Esti is Scandi as Estonia secure Scandinavia. Every state in Scandinavia it needs to be controlled by Estonia or a subject of Estonia. Yeah, that's gonna be a tall order. I haven't really checked out the Estonian focus tree. I saw it was pretty cool, but I don't know just how much stronger Estonia can get if it's gonna go up against everything in Scandinavia on its own. It's gonna be facing off against the Allies. I suppose if you side with Germany, all things are possible. But then again, you need to be in control of those states and Germany tends to invade Norway and Denmark. So I I'm not sure this is gonna be easy, but once again, I look forward to making a guide on this one. Not a step back, as the Soviet Union never lose one core territory to anyone before 1945. So this is that Romanian achievement all over again, except this time you don't have a great defensive line that you can sit behind. There are no major rivers. You are going to park your army on the borders of your core territory and you will endure an onslaught and they will come for you with a vengeance. This is gonna be a tough one. This is gonna require you to min-max your economy to pump out the greatest army the world has ever seen or to simply try and avoid war without losing core territory. I don't think you're gonna be able to do that, to be honest, unless you play very, very aggressive very early game to knock out the Germans. I look forward to this one. I really want to try this one in a few different ways. I have some ideas. I look forward to putting them into practice. Immediately followed by one step forward as the Soviet Union declare war on Poland and Germany before Germany attacks Poland. So if you're gonna play aggressively, this is probably one of the easy ways to get both achievements. I think you can knock out Poland really easy. The Soviet army is massive unless they really change that in the upcoming DLC. So knock out Poland and you should be good to immediately go for Germany because the German army in 36, 37, even 38 really is not that much to sniff at compared to the massive, massive Soviet army. Again, unless they extensively change that in the upcoming DLC. These sound difficult, but I think I think they won't be that hard. And of course, we have to continue on the meme path, the Soviet Union, as the Soviet Union have only puppets as neighbors. Um, this one's a bit annoying because you've got a lot of borders that you're gonna need to puppet. So everything in China is gonna be a problem. You've got Manchukuo there, that's also a problem. So you're gonna face off against Japan. You've got Japan itself, which is gonna be annoying. Then there's, uh, let's see, Finland, you've got Poland, you've got the Baltics. Those aren't really that much of an issue. But I think you also border like Afghanistan, Iran, like all in all. Oh God, Turkey, that as well. So yeah, you, you've got uh, quite the extensive campaign ahead of you here. So again... I look forward to making a guide on this one. And because we cannot have a DLC without a Crusader Kings reference, Crusader Kings 3 as Poland, crown a monarch and capture Jerusalem. Deus Fult, my friends, Deus Fult. Poland has a list of monarchs it can choose from, so finding a king shouldn't be an issue. Capturing Jerusalem is going to be... Eh, I think it's going to be easy if you side with a fascist monarch. Get yourself access membership and just naval invade from Italy. That should be possible. At, at least if capture Jerusalem means just occupation and not ownership, because if you're gonna need to capitulate the allies, eh, it's gonna be a bit more difficult, but not that much. All in all, this one's here for the meme. The Romanovs last laugh. Restore the Romanovs to the throne and conquer Germany, Hungary, Austria, Czechoslovakia, Turkey, and Bulgaria. I was gonna do a Romanov playthrough and they just upped the stakes here. It's gonna be quite a bit of fighting, 
but I think we should be able to pull this off with just fighting the Axis if we can get an early war in on Turkey. This should be possible without having to fight the Allies. And even if you have to fight the Allies, once you've kicked Germany, Hungary, Austria and Czechoslovakia, well, they're a package deal really. If you've kicked the Axis in the nuts, taking Turkey really isn't that hard. And again, if conquer means occupation, if conquer means own the states, you're probably going to need to knock the USA out of the war. That tends to be a bit of a bitch. So I'm gonna need to find a way to do this easily without having to go past 1945. We don't really like statistics as the Soviet Union under Stalin conquered Germany while suffering less than 1 million casualties total. I think this one's gonna be relatively easy if you play strategically. So tank armies to minimize your casualties, investment in air, and just refrain from making mass infantry offensives. And this should be easy. Couple of pockets, destroy the German army, walk in. Think, yeah, don't think this one's gonna be that hard. Race for Germany. As the Soviet Union capitulate Germany after the fall of France, but before the Allies control one German core state. Considering the state of the Allied AI, this should not be too difficult unless they update it in no step back because they are changing some naval invasion mechanics. Who knows, it might be possible possible that the allies become semi-competent that might make this a challenge we'll see now this could be a problem if the allies are still able to do those cheesy naval landings around hamburg because if that happens i mean one naval landing there germany not defending its coast something you have no control over that would screw you over and i don't like rng so we'll we'll have to see how this one plays out siberian tiger as tanutuva form siberia i have to try this one i absolutely have to try this one i don't I, I have no idea how to pull this one off. It's gonna require a ton of cheese, I bet. Abuse factions, abuse peace deals, but I wanna try this one. Just a propaganda as the Soviet Union activate 30 propaganda campaigns before 1945. That mostly sounds like a massive political power sink and something you just need to pay attention to while you're playing a regular game. Don't think it's too difficult. Should be able to pick that up if you pay a little bit of attention to the mechanic. Around Eurasia in 80 days, have a railroad from Gibraltar to Singapore. Now the railroad's not the problem. The issue is gonna be you need to control all that land to be able to build that railroad. So this is gonna be combined with the world conquest, I think. So something like um, a British Empire playthrough, this would suit that very well. I don't like world conquests, but this might just give me a reason to try one, I guess. And then finally, the Poland peasant revolution. As Poland have the peasants strike overthrow the government, that's actually the one focus path of Poland that I was not really interested in and I guess this is their way of getting me to play it. Uh, it looks fairly weak so this might be one of the more difficult ones. Then again I could be entirely wrong and it's gonna be a matter of timing and figuring out game mechanics. We'll find out. We'll find out. I'll let you know whenever I make a guide on this. If it's possible to make it easy, I will make it easy for you guys, I promise. Anyway, that is it for today. That's all they had. 20 new achievements. I am certainly looking forward to getting all of these. Unless I don't, because I still don't have 100%. Which is a bit ironic, I suppose, since I mostly make guides for these. But next week, we will finally get the patch notes for 1.11 Barbarossa. I'm very much looking forward to that. We are closing in on that release date. I am hyped for this one, guys. I am hyped. I hope you are there with me when we can finally play No Step Back. Anyway, this has been me, Bittersteel. If you like the video, leave a like, consider subscribing, and hit that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload more content. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.